Welcome to another episode of Pro Style Podcast. And the cool thing about this episode is it's always dope to link up with ex-teammates, ex-friends, ex-native Alabamians. And today I got my man Mario Addison on. Mario, how you doing, bro? I'm doing well, man. What about yourself? Man, I'm doing good. I, never remember, I remember the first time I met you, man. In the locker room, you came in. You was like, yeah, man, I'm, you know, I'm from Birmingham, too. You know what I mean? Da, da, da. Yeah. And I was like, what high school you went to? He was like, yeah. man, I went to, you know, I was over there in Tarrant. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. To see, you know, where you're at right now is super cool. But first, let's start off by Troy, man. How'd you end up at Troy? Um, When I was at um at Tarrant, you know, I was um, a quarterback, a quarterback and a running back. Then they recruited me as an athlete. Hmm. So once they recruited me as an athlete, I already knew, man, I might end up playing, you know, uh, on the defensive side. Right. And then when it was time, you know, to go to Troy, you know, I had other offers too, but I chose Troy. But um, but then I, I went to JUCO. Hmm. Straight out of high school, I went to JUCO. So my first year in JUCO, 06, I played linebacker. Hmm. Then the second year, and I won like the best player of the North. In the second year, I played defense end. Mm-hmm. And I won, you know, best year, um, best player of the North. Then I ended up signing back with Troy coming out of JUCO, um, yeah, going to uh, 2008. I um, I was being loyal, man. Yeah. They uh they stuck with me the whole time when I was a junior college. They kept checking on me, you know what I'm saying, make sure I was good, man. And um, you know, that I ended up with them. Yeah. So how was that transition from linebacker to D N? Was it was it an easy, smooth transition? Because you went from the offensive side of the ball to the defensive yeah. side of the ball, and not many guys can make that transition. Granted, you are an athlete, but not everybody can make a smooth transition. Yeah. How was it for you? Um Speed helped me out. Speed helped me a lot, um, you know, into making the um, transition. My first time at linebacker, um, you know, I went to JUCO. I graduated 2006, went to JUCO 2006. And, um, you know, mind me, I'm used to running the ball, running over people, running around people, you know, <laughs> breaking down the sideline. But um, when it was time to hit people, it was different for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't playing nothing but offense. So I remember this guy, man, JUCO, he was um, he from Arkansas. His name, his name was Drew. They ran like a um, like a counter play. Mm-hmm. He cut right and came back left, and the hole opened up. I was outside back, and the hole opened up. This man here, bro, my eyes got so big. <laughs> then, so I went in for the kill. Bro ran me over. <laughs> but when I say he ran me over, bro, it was like so he sounded moving, man. So long time <laughs> when it, when he hit me, he kept going. Wow. <laughs> I'm on the ground and I look up, he's still running. I'm like, oh man. Yeah. I got ran over. And it was like a real, it wasn't like no no hit. You just ran over. It was a real hit. Like I thought, right. I, you know what I'm saying? I went in. Yeah. And bro ran me old, man. And, and I realized that day, you know what I'm saying? I got a, I got, we're going to tech me. I got, we're going to all that. And um, I'm glad he did that because that, that changed my life. And yeah. I had to work on, you know, actually hitting people the proper way and all that, you know what I'm saying? And I realized speed wasn't everything. So I had to have some technique. Yeah. Then I, I end up, you know what I'm saying, getting better as practice went, you know what I'm saying, each week, each week, each game, end up doing well. Nice. See, we always have that humbling moment in football. Oh, man. Everybody. Everybody, bro. <laughs> My senior year in high school, first time ever going to the playoffs, I think in like maybe 10 years in the history of our of school, we are playing Scottsboro first round away of running back by the name of Blake Earl. He was about 6'2", probably 6'2". like – 200 running back they ran the option the first play of the game i'm the safety first play of the game yeah yeah. open field just me and blake i chop him down he jump up and scream i'm coming back bennett i'm coming back in my mind i'm thinking come on not again you come back yeah 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 yeah, i'm 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 gonna chop you down again you know yeah and i tried to you know i said you know what i ain't gonna chop him down you know i get to the back i'm gonna hit him up high you know yeah I could take him on. He'll be a big dude, but you know, I, yeah, yeah. It's so probably five plays later. Again, he's in the open. Yeah, like, you know what? I'm gonna show scouts why. You know, I'm the 18th ranked player in the state. Yeah, I go in, try to knock him out. Nah, he run me over. Oh for like man, a, for like, a, for like a 60 yard touchdown. <laughs> yeah, during hey, the playoff, learned, bro, round of the playoff. The best on. Yeah, hey, the best it, you really do. You're, you talk about somebody that was mad and humble at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. 
wasn't nothing else I could do. You know, he got the best of me that time. They ended up beating us like 45 to 13 or something like that. Oh, man, they got y'all. Yeah, he, yeah he, he got the yeah. best of me. But the one thing you talked about is your speed, man. And coming off the edge, you've been doing this for nine years now. You've yes, been sir. coming yes, off sir. the edge and proving that, you know, all those teams that really pass on you, one being the Chicago Bears. Yep, yep. Colts. Colts. Three. Redskins. Yep. And yep. you finally landed in Carolina, and now you've been doing your thing. Just talk about how that speed from being on the offensive side transitioned to the defensive side and now being – one of the elite yeah. pass rushers in the league. Yeah. Um, you know, once you got speed, you know, um, you can build off a lot of things. And, um, you know, far as the other teams that, you know, uh, kind of passed on, like you said, they didn't really give me an opportunity, you know what I'm saying, like to really show what I can do. Right. And, um, Carolina did. And, and I learned, man, when you're in the league, if, if a team don't have much invested in you, yeah, then they really don't really care about you or, you know, it's business. Yeah. You know, it's, it's business and uh, they won't really give you the chance. Yeah. And, uh, you just got to, uh, like I tell all younger guys, man, you just got to uh, never give up, man. If yeah. you're passionate about anything, just keep pushing and you'll get your opportunity. But mm-hmm. I can guarantee you won't get your opportunity if you don't keep pushing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, um, when I got here, when I got here in the end of 2012, when I got to, um, to Charlotte and um, my coach, my D line coach told me, you know, he asked me a simple question. You know, what's your asset? Like, what, what, what can you, what do you have that you that you love? And I said, um, I got speed. Mm. I'm real, I'm real quick out the ball. He was like, okay, okay, okay. Then he gave me different. You know what I'm saying? Like, all the main is like, what to do with your speed? What you do when you right here? So he quizzed me the first day I asked. I mean, I met him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, I was like and I really couldn't answer. It, mm. You know. Cause I was used to just speed, yeah. but then he, he he told me that it's great to have speed, but you gotta learn how to count off speed. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Your, your second move, you gotta learn how to do all that. Yeah. He broke it down. He broke it down to me, and um, Coach Air Washington. Yeah, Air Washington. That's my D line coach. Shout out to Coach Washington, man. Yeah, Coach Washington. He was up there with you in Chicago. Yeah, I remember Coach yeah. Washington. Yeah. yeah, he was up on uh, Marinelli. And uh, him and Marinelli, like, they very similar, very, mm-hmm. very similar. But he took his time with me, man, and built me into an elite pass rusher. Nice. Uh, like I said, I brought the speed. He brought all the techniques and um and everything I needed to see. And um, he taught, he just taught me a lot, man. So, so what does it take to perfect the spin move? I've seen it. I've seen that spin move. What does it take to to get in a position where you know that I'm going to win – on his spin move, no matter what. Because there's a yeah. lot of guys that try to spin move and it look very, very stupid and dumb. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, why Why do they even try a spin move? Like, now you're okay. just wasting time. How do you know that you have that tackle and now it's time to spin? All right, so first you got to create momentum. Mm. And in able to do that, you got to have energy to rush. Yeah. So if you're, if you're tired, let's say you you'd have had like a eight-play drive and you're tired, mm-hmm. don't do the spin move. <laughs> because it's going to be lazy and, you know, it just ain't going to look good. It ain't going to be, you know what I'm saying, successful. But yeah. if you got energy and you're feeling good, so basically take them up to speed as fast as you can. As soon as you see the tackle open up his shoulder, yeah, you know, trying to, like, run you by, then you count. It's spin one in, but a counter move. Mm. Then you count uh, him, create momentum and count momentum. You spin back on the inside. Because as mm. soon as he turn, he ain't going to You know, if he's square, kick him yeah. back square, he can redirect. He can run you by and re- redirect your inside move. But as soon as he turns his shoulder, e, you got him. You got him. You got him. You got so, him. So, so the key to it is to make sure you don't do it on the long passing down or a long drive, a long play drive, right? Yep. If you don't have the energy. If you ain't got the energy. Don't, yep. don't do it if you ain't got the energy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. And the other one is to make sure you, you at least get that shoulder turn. You get that shoulder turn, then do it. Yep. Get that show to turn, you, you do it. That, that's yep. a, because I appreciate watching it. For me, being a guy that plays safety and then yeah. playing wide receiver in, in college yeah. in the NFL, I like watching defensive end get out there. Like, yeah. being able to see those guys really battle, I think it was always cool. But the one thing yeah. that I could never perfect whenever I try, you know, getting yeah. off the block and this is yeah. a yeah. move. I, I just – like, right, 
I like, all right, let, let me let me just try a spin move right now, and then it looks yeah. stupid on film. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I appreciate time. appreciate that knowledge and all you future defensive end. You you just heard it, man. From Mario Addison, one of the best defensive end in the league right now. Let's shift gears right now. Pro Style Podcast looks at the symmetry between sports and hip hop. My man, what are you listening to right now? Like, if you had to pull your phone out and hit play, what song would play? All right. I've been throwing out these last. <laughs> 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 hey, these last Kodak day, man. I've been on a little Kodak, man. Uh-oh. Kodak. Uh, little Kodak, uh, Kodak, Kodak he crazy, man. He weird, man. <laughs> Some of his music be, you know, decent, man. I be listening to um, He got a single out right now called Pimpin' Ain't Easy. Mm-hmm. And it's real. You know, it, it's, it's funny, but it, it's, it's a nice little, little lyric. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's, it's smooth. Got a yeah. dope little beat behind it. So that's why, you know, I, I jump in the car and play some, you know what I'm saying, Air Blue Moon. I'll do real. Yeah. But um, going to like my my, my rap, like my go-to rap, you know, back in the day, it used to be Wayne. Mm. But now it's more it more so, you know, I like, I used to like Gucci Man. Yeah. Gucci Man, you know, he, he different now. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? His lyrics just don't stand out to me like they used to. <laughs> and I, I, I don't feel it like I used to. Come on, like, Gucci. You know, we, need, we need the old lean back. The old Gucci back. back. We need the That's old Gucci need. back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, gain 40 more pounds. Hey, hey, gain 200 more pounds. Get that right, man. <laughs> You, you can hear the, you know what I'm saying? You can hear the passion in his voice, man. Oh, for sure. Man. For sure. Um, but right now, man, I say I like I like Rick Ross. Yeah. Ross got a little, you know what I'm saying, a little everything for you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Smooth ride, something for the girls. You know what I'm saying? If you want to get a little, you know, we call the gutter. You want to get a little gutter, you know what I'm saying? He got a little of that for you. So mm-hmm. he's very versatile, man, as, as as an artist. Yeah, I love Ross on that, I think, is it that push your T? Is it the piano song? Yeah. Yeah, Man, he just came in and just just ripped it, and that's vintage Ross, like you know, Port of Miami Ross. Like that's the Ross that I love. I enjoy. I can't wait till he put out the new album. Man, he's one of those guys that's been doing it for a long time. So let's yeah. say if you had a game tomorrow, is there a particular song that you listen to before every game? So for me, it was Gucci. I had yeah. to I had to hear that Gucci photo shoot song seven times before I went out. You got a song? Um. The one song that I, I usually listen to my headphones a lot. And, um, the last two years I've been like just trying to listen to anything to fire me up. Yeah. But then I, I always go back to the song. So you know the artist Lil White? You to be yep. on uh, Three Six White Mafia. Yeah. I used to like Lil White. Lil White, you have, you know what I'm saying? He he rap with fire. Yeah. And he gets you going. So it's a song called um Homicidal, Suicidal. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's smooth, and it get real crazy at the end. Yeah. He'd be like, okay, let go, let go, let go. You know what I'm saying? So it's a little white uh, homicide or suicide. Yeah. So what type of pregame player are you, all right? Are you that pregame player that just jumping around going crazy? Are you the cool guy? Are you the give yourself that pep talk guy? What type of pregame routine you go through? Um, For me, man, I like um, – I'm more of a chill guy. Yeah. I like to sit, I like to sit down and, and visualize – you know what I'm saying? Like, go back over the plays in my head on what I'm going to do, you know what I'm saying? And what's, if I'm in a situation, how how I'm going to, you know what I'm saying, prepare for that, mm-hmm. like, while I'm in that situation. So yeah. I like to run through stuff in my head and see what I'm going to do. And um, But on my inside, man, I'm anxious. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> I'm, I'm so I'm so anxious that I'm nervous, man. Mm. Every game. I'm nervous yeah. for every game, man. Nine years. I don't, care, I don't care what people say. Yeah, I don't care what people say, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to my ninth year. Everybody be nervous for their game, man. And um, yeah. I get into that first piece of contact, yeah. I be good. I be good. So I got to hit somebody. I got to touch something real quick. Yeah. Man, I, I just got to hit somebody, man, because I be real nervous. So that, that's what it is, man. Yeah. No, that's interesting because I used to be nervous before every game. I had that one freaking ritual where I couldn't shake anybody's hand. I didn't want nobody to touch my gloves. I was just fearful that if anybody touched my gloves, I was guaranteed to drop a ball that game. Yeah, yeah. Why I feel like that, I don't know. You know, you get up off the grass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, off the yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah. think about that. But the one thing for me was don't touch my gloves. Don't touch your gloves. I, yeah. I actually have a picture of me running out of the tunnel after they called my name. You're at the front of the line. My hands are backwards, and I'm dapping you up. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I have yeah. that photo. I promise. I'll, I'll be sure to send it to you. But that was just – yeah, that yeah. was just me. So if there's one thing that you can say that you see between – the symmetry between hip-hop and sports, what would it be? 
Ooh, that's a good question. That's a real good question. Um, that's a good question, EP. Um, <laughs> that's a real good question. Between the two. Um, so for me, I look at the competitiveness of it, right? So let's say yeah. in rivalry in divisions in Chicago, you got the Packers and the Bears who just don't like each other when they play. Yeah. And then you have artists like Meek Mills and Drake who were who were beefing at the time, right? They were yeah. very competitive, they were rivals. And it's the symmetry between that is that you're gonna go out and you're gonna compete at a high level because you wanna show that team that you're the best. Meek yeah. Mills wanna show yeah. he's the best and vice versa. Yeah. So when you Bears go out and play the Packers, you're gonna compete at a high level because no matter what, yeah, that we're better than y'all. This is beef. This is a rivalry game, right? Yeah. A rivalry game and beef is the symmetry that I see between hip hop and sports. Because I mean, God, like it's gonna happen. You have rivalries in the NFL. You have yeah. rivalries all the all across the board in hip hop. So g- give me one. What what you think? What you see? Man, it's crazy, man. You said it. <laughs> you said without feeling, but I just can't, you know, elaborate yeah. on it like you just did. For sure. You're right, you, you right, man. Everybody want to be at the top. Yeah. And then when um, and when you don't perform like you want to, it's an artist or even an athlete, you know, you get kind of down. Mm-hmm. And, um, and when somebody else outperforming you, then, you know, like some people, some yeah. people get jealous and envy that person and, you know, want to target them because they're not doing, you know what I'm saying, they're not as you know, successful as them, right. which they are successful, but they want to be, like you said, everybody want to be at, at the top, man. Everybody. When you compete against somebody on the field, man, you want to dominate them every play, yeah. no matter what. Yeah. And um, there's the between them, on, even on, like like artists, they, they want to dominate everything, man. Yeah. They want to be the talk of the town, no matter what. Yeah. Well, man, I'm looking forward to this season. You guys are putting some things together. You drafted it on the defensive side. You get Cam back healthy. McCaffrey's yeah, coming into his own. You coming out yeah. the edge. You guys got the ball hogs at the cornerback position. Yeah, yeah. Wide receiver. Torrey Smith is a pro style guy. Alumni. I appreciate him for coming on. Yeah. Man, I'm excited for you guys. How can the people follow you on social media? Um, my Instagram is hitstick4. Um, H-I-T-S-T-I-Q-4. And that's my um, it's my IG name. Oh, you can type Mario Addison, but um, mostly hit stick four, it'll pop up. There we go, man. My man Mario Addison on Pro Style. Hey, man, y'all go to www.prostyle.com. Check out the website. Check out the merch. We got the episodes up. We got the blog going. Hey, bro, I appreciate you being on me today, man. Much love. Hey, straight up, bro. Yes, sir.